Hi, uh, today I wanted to give you guys an early peek uh, at some stuff I've been working on. Uh, basically, uh, if you're familiar with my other splat map shaders and my vertex painter, some of this will be familiar. Uh, but what I've added is a custom uh, vertex painter and a uh, special shader, which allows you to pay, paint up to 256 textures in one splat map. Uh, so I can paint down uh, basically as many textures as I want. They all blend together with height maps, individual settings for things like their metallicness and their specular response. Uh, you can provide that either as a value for each one or as a texture. Uh, the performance of this is actually quite good. Um, it uses a different splat map mapping technique than uh, traditional splat maps, uh, which has some limitations of its own, but um, allows for a very large number of textures. It would be very easy to make this use more textures than 256, but that seems uh, pretty reasonable um, to set a limit for. Um, so I can just keep painting different textures down on this. Uh, there's no performance penalty for painting more or less textures like traditional splat mapping. Uh, you don't have to select a shader that has a certain number of textures. You can just um, start selecting textures and paint as many as you want, and you will have the same performance, uh, at least in terms of shader calculations, um, regardless of how many uh, textures you're using. Uh, it does obviously move more data through the bus for all that texture data, so there is some performance penalty in um, accessing this many textures, but uh, it's not actually a shader cost, it's just a sort of memory bandwidth. Um, so uh, this is all pretty cool. It's nice to be able to have this many textures. I think one of the limitations you'll notice as I'm painting is that each vertice only has uh, one value. Uh, so you can't paint like 25% of one uh, texture or another like you can in a traditional splat map. Uh, but the benefit is you can have, you know, as many maps as you want, basically. Um, and so that's a pretty nice trade-off. Uh, I think that changes how you uh, design your textures, um, where in this system what you might end up with is having uh, several variations on a texture that are very similar but, but have these minor differences. Uh, so that you can paint down these uh, sort of variations and blends as unique textures rather than painting them down uh, as 25% uh, of one and 50% of another. Um, so the texture support, the system supports all the uh, stuff that the standard shader would support, like um, you know having emissive and uh, specular reflections. Uh, this current one is using a metallic workflow, and they provide both workflows. I'm not sure. Um, and uh, it also supports parallax mapping, um, simple parallax mapping. The uh, other kind I feel is too expensive for the, the value, though who knows, I might add it one day. Um, and it supports uh, flow mapping. Uh, so for instance, if I find this lava texture and paint this down, I can make a little area of lava, and again, this has a missive, so it's lit up and whatnot. Uh, but what I can do is flip over to the flow uh, painting part of my um, vertex painter uh, and paint down some uh, flow directions here so that uh, we start moving this. And you'll notice that um, it moves that texture uh, but does not move the other ones. Uh, now one side effect is that you can actually slide around and, and create warps on the other textures uh, using the flow mapping data. Uh, so I can actually paint some of that in where I'm not flow mapping and get these little adjustments on my texture, uh, which is really kind of neat. Um, uh, and it's just sort of a side effect of the way the shader works. Um, but you won't see any motion there because um, I've turned down the motion on that particular texture. So when you actually look at the shader, uh, it has a custom editor. And what I can do is go through any of the indices here uh, for my textures find the texture I want, and it has individual parameters for its metallic and smoothing uh, if you're not providing a map for that. And then it has uh, UV scale parameters, so if I decide I want you know, a smaller or, or more tiled UV scale, I can do that. And then it has a parameter for how much of the flow map to take on, what speed should it be. And so if I set that to zero, then uh, you, know, you don't get the, the motion. If you turn it up, you get a little more. 
So you can flow map as many of the textures as you want. So you could have five different te textures or 10 textures that, that take flow map information. They can each have their own parameters for um, you know, how much motion they should take on. And then what you can do is go and paint over your mesh with the actual motion. Um, this uh, mesh I'm using is pretty low poly, uh, which makes it really easy for me to um, uh, test various things. Um, but uh, obviously, if you have a high poly match, you can get a lot more control. Um, so yeah, uh, it's uh, a really uh, efficient shader um, because there is no uh, cost for how many textures you use. So if you use uh, 256 textures uh, on your, your and paint them all down on your model, um, that will have the same cost as if you just have three on here. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm trying to think of what else I should talk about. Um, so I'm probably going to put this one up on the asset store, uh, see how it sells. I gave away the Vertex Painter and my previous spot map shaders all for free, uh, and that's been really fun to do. Um, but I'd kind of like to see if this is useful to people. Um, it does have some limitations hardware-wise. It's not going to run on uh, very low-end phones that run OpenGL 2.0, uh, for instance, or on DX9. Uh, devices, uh, but most uh, most modern or semi-modern devices uh, will be able to support everything in the shader. Uh, basically, uses shader model 3.5 if you write shaders um, as its minimum, and that maps to basically OpenGL devices, DX11 devices, um, OpenGL S 3.0 devices, uh, Metal, and uh, I'm probably forgetting an API here, but uh, it should work on all of those. Um, I have a lot more work to do on both uh, shader variants, um, so I want to add uh, something for people who like a specular workflow. Um, in this shader, I actually have the sort of standard workflow where you have um, a metallic uh, and smoothness map. And then uh, I actually have another workflow, uh, which if you turn on this use advanced uh, specular, and that's actually what my data was generated for, so I had it wrong all along. Uh, but this gives you ambient occlusion, uh, basically pack some other stuff into the map. So what you end up with is packing into your into a single texture, your your metallic, your smoothness, your emissive, and then your ambient occlusion. And so that's great because you can get that all from one sample rather than uh, sampling uh, more things. It, it does support, uh, if you would like to um, use an actual emissive color uh, instead of a single emissive color, uh, value, basically a mask. What I do is multiply the color by um, the emissive mask, so it'll make the the red areas emissive, but not the black in this case. Um, so, uh, so yeah, if you want a full emissive array, you can do that. Um, there are some other features here. For instance, I can add a macro texture. Uh, let me just turn off the painter here. Um, and so sometimes what you want to do is you might have uh, like a terrain that has, um, you know, you've generated this in, uh, you know, some program, maybe you brushed it, whatever, you have some giant terrain, and so you want to get the color and basic normal from that terrain, and then blend in the splat mapping with it so that you can sort of add your close-up details. So uh, if I turn on this mode, um, basically what I can do is, is add this macro diffuse and normal texture, and that uses the original UVs instead of these scaled ones. And then I can select various blending modes to, to sort of blend that with, uh, with the splats. And then I can basically turn that up or down. So the nice thing about this is what you can do is create a bunch of uh, textures for, you know, when you're close up that have this sort of detail. But then you can have a, a global color map over the whole object um, on a terrain to give it its overall shading. And then as you see that in the distance, it will have this really nice shading. Uh, generated out of something like, you know, Geo Control or whatever your favorite terrain program is, but up close can still have really tight details that are modulated with that using uh, four blend modes I have currently supported. Um, on top of that, you can also uh, have detail texturing. And the detail texturing um, basically can have a detail albedo and normal map. Uh, also has the four blend modes and um, the detail textures map one to one with uh, the various textures you have in your, your uh, total texture pool here. Um, so basically what you can do is give each of these their own detail uh, texture um, 
and then uh, as you get you know uh, as you get close up, you'll get those little details that blend in. Um, I have not set that up yet. Uh, I've tested it, but I haven't spent the time to make 36 detail textures for the 36 textures I have on this right now, um, because that's a lot of time. And just you know, getting these textures in and getting all the maps for them, and you know, getting them somewhat tuned. They're not very tuned, but uh, it takes a lot of time. Um, so yeah, so. I've got a lot of work left to do, um, but I'm hoping to get this on the App Store fairly soon. Uh, and let me know if you're interested, um, have use for this, what kind of features you'd like, um, you know, any thoughts you have uh, on uh, what could be interesting with the technique uh, for your game or, you know, um, other things you'd like to see. And, um, yeah, uh, so I hope you uh, find this interesting and maybe useful in your game one day. Thanks.